Pac-12 Men's Basketball Media Day continues from Las Vegas, and it's time to talk USC Trojans. Great to have the head coach of the Trojans, Andy Enfield, with us on the stage now. And, uh, Coach, good to see you. We'd love to hear what are your thoughts. A lot, uh, a lot of headlines around the Trojans, obviously, uh, as is uh, the case. So how are things coming together for you? Well, we're really excited for our basketball team. Great mix of experienced players that have been in a lot of big games, very talented freshman class. This is our most athletic and fast uh, with speed. Should play a lot faster this year than we have because of our speed and athleticism. You might have one of the best backcourts in the country, too, with Collier and Ellis. Talk about those two and, and what you've seen so far, them playing together. You know, Boogie was your leading scorer last year, but had to have the ball in his hands some. He's, with Collier in there, seems like he might be able to play off the ball a little bit more. Boogie and Isaiah Collier are great. They complement each other very well. And Boogie is a natural scorer, but he's come a long way in his decision making, and he's a really tremendous lead guard right now. He's really improved, had a tremendous trip to uh, Greece and Croatia in August, where he had a seven to one assist to turnover ratio. And then Isaiah Collier is very fast and athletic, and what a tremendous passer with tremendous court vision. So I think those two in the backcourt together are very dynamic to, as, as a tandem. We know Bronny had the, the health issue, the cardiac arrest in July. How's, how's Bronny doing? He's doing well. I think at the appropriate time, the James family will give further updates. Uh, I think, as LeBron stated last week at Media Day, uh, things were progressing. And uh, you know, under any medical condition, we respect the privacy of the young man. And, uh, but I think everybody is very supportive and hoping he gets back quickly. What about Iwo Chukwu? Do you have an update on him and, and his progression from his summer? Vince is feeling great, probably the best he's ever felt physically and we expect him to play a full season we're excited to get him on the court i think you look up and uh, we'll see boogie ellison here soon but it's, you know in an era where things change a lot and obviously boogie ha had had some change in his career but to be able to bring him back what does that mean to your team well, he's our leading returning scorer and he's come a long way one of the most improved players we've ever coached at usc the thing that's improved the best is his leadership skill. And he's a true leader of our team. And he's played in a lot of big games and had some great games for us last year to achieve the success that we did. You know, you talked about the speed of this team. Might be your most athletic team. Does that change your approach on either side, Andy? But obviously, you said playing faster. But you guys have been really good defensively for a long time. It, does it allow you, when you have a more athletic team, to do more? Or is it better just to simplify it defensively because of the athleticism? I think man-to-man -man defense will be our primary, like it has been. I think we have the number one two-point field goal percent defense in the country over a four-year period, the last four seasons. So our players know that stat. They have a lot to live up to. Every day in practice, we remind them that defense helps us win games. Uh, the nights that you shoot 35% from the field, you still have to have a chance to win, and you do that by defending. Uh, they, everybody knows that if they don't play hard on that side of the ball, they come out of the game and they, they might not go back in for a while. So we've had tremendous buy-in defensively over the years. We recruit size and length and shot blocking and, and our wings are big and, and we're athletic. So I, I think we can play a multiple of defenses. We can press a little bit. And our 2-3 zone has been, that's been very effective for us in the past. Uh, could be a very effective if our guys get to know the bumps and the, uh, the defensive philosophy of a, of a zone. But at the end of the day, our man has to be uh, the go-to. Kobe Johnson's proven himself as a, one of the best defenders in this league. He's here, so we'll hear from him as well. But what have you seen in his game uh, from last, last season to this, you think? Well, Kobe, to me, is the best defensive player in our league and possibly the United States. He's six foot six. He anticipates tremendously. Uh, Evan Mobley and DeAnthony Melton, who are both in the NBA right now, were our two best defenders. And Jordan McLaughlin was pretty good, too, and he's in the league. So, but, but Kobe has that unusual ability to anticipate uh, he can gamble but still be in position to recover at the same time. He gets a lot of deflections, a lot of steals, and he can guard big or small. So uh, it's fun to watch him, and our players know that when he's guarding them in practice, it might be a long day. And you got big Joshua Morgan back, too. How, how, how much of a luxury is that to have his rim protection again this year? You talk about the two-point defense. That's a big reason why you guys challenge everything with your length. But to have that backline rim protector makes your defense even that much better. 
Yeah, Joshua led the league in block shots last year. I think he was top five or six in the country. And combining Josh with Vince Nuwachukwu when Vince gets back and our other big guys like Johnny Wright and Arrington Page, we have a lot of size and athleticism. So uh, we're looking forward to playing big, playing small. And, and Joshua has the ability to uh, guard and switch on smaller, even point guards, and keep them in front of him with the cushion in his long arms. Yeah, Arrington Page, uh, tell us about him. One of the, you know, this is a, obviously a very highly touted class with Bronny and Isaiah Collier, but it seems like Arrington Page could be uh, an impact guy. You just mentioned him there. Do you expect him to make an impact quickly? Yes, our fre freshman class is terrific with uh, Bronny, Isaiah Collier, Arrington, and Brandon Gardner. Gives us incredible athleticism and length, and, and Arrington is uh, six over six foot ten and very skilled. So we expect him to be uh, in a Chemezi Metu mold where uh, he can play different positions inside, outside, and really affect the game in a variety of ways. How, how did you schedule this year, Andy, knowing that you were going to have, like you mentioned right off the top, your balanced roster? You know, you got veteran guys, you got good young players, you got athleticism. What was the approach to putting your schedule together this year? We have a very challenging league schedule because the Pac-12 is, is probably as good as it's been in many years. We knew our league schedule would be tough, uh, but we, de we decided to go out and get some national games. We opened the season here in Las Vegas against Kansas State, who went to Elite Eight last year, come back to Vegas and play Gonzaga on December 2nd at MGM. And then we have a tough uh, tournament with uh, Oklahoma, Seton Hall, and Iowa. And then we're playing at Auburn in December. Uh, so we have a lot of challenging games that, that could uh, – Help our team prepare for the uh, grueling Pac-12 schedule. What do you think will be the biggest? You know, all, all, most teams are better in you know January, February than they are in November. But what do you think? What what area do you think that will be for you guys? If if you are better in something January, February, what what area would that be? I, I think defensively we'll improve because uh, with guys being out and not having the foreign tour, some of our key guys. Once we get them in and get some experience, our freshmen, our four freshmen get some experience, I think it'll really help our uh, overall depth. And I think we'll be a deeper team come January and February. DJ Rodman was a guy that played well against you last year. Obviously, in, in the Pac-12, we've all seen him. He transfers in from Washington State, was one of the best players in the league defensively, really improved his three-point shot, uh, was a winning player on the road. Like, all these things that the second he went to USC, I think it got everybody's attention. So... How does he fit in, and uh, what do you expect from DJ Rodman this year? Well, DJ is a great fit for our team. He has no ego. He just wants to win. He does a lot of winning things. As you mentioned, he had over 30 charges uh, on the defensive end last season. And he's not the rim protector as the guys we just he's – so, so he's a great complement as a position defender. He's very skilled offensively, very smart player. And he can play with other good players, and I think he's uh, just a tremendous asset to our team. Well, Jeff's I'm done. Nope. Okay. Well, I think, uh, you know, as a guy who, who played in this league, when you look around this league, we saw Lazar Stefanovic in here with UCLA. He just played at Utah. We saw Pella Larson, you know, go to Arizona. Is, is it in any way when you're coaching last year, the year before, you watching guys going, is this a guy that could help us in the future when you're playing non-conference games? Are you thinking that? Do you have to think that way differently versus, you know, the way – you coached and scouted kind of college basketball in years past? Well, the transfer portal has certainly changed the game as far as recruiting goes. We try to develop freshmen and keep them in our program. We took one transfer this year, none last year, and only one year before when Tajidi left, we, we, uh, Boogie Ellis came. So we do it a little differently at USC. We try to uh, stay out of the transfer portal if we have to. Uh, go then, then we'll, we'll, out of need, we'll, we will then. DJ was a need for us. We needed that position and that type of player. We assumed he would stay at Washington State. He's had a great career there. But then things change. And, and, and we, so we don't really think about that as we're going through a season. We respect other talented players and other teams. And uh, when we played against a guy like DJ at Washington State for four years, we knew he was a very good player. And it, it was fun to watch his development because he's from California. And he's just such a good, young, great young man. And, and so we appreciate the fact that he improved there. But once he, he did put his name in a portal, then, of course, we called him. You know, listening to you talk, Andy, it, it seems like, and in, in for years it seemed like you had Okongwu and then the Mobley brothers. You were always big in playing through the bigs. Um, and now it's different. I mentioned off the top you might have the best backcourt in the country. How does that change, you know, how you look at it and how you're going to approach the offensive end when you have 
you know, maybe not the scoring bigs, you have the defensive bigs, but now your real punch comes from the backcourt. We played four guards last year. This year we have the option to play two bigs. We could put Vince out there with Josh and Kajani and AP, and or we could go four guards. Uh, and, and so it gives us versatility. When we had the bigger guys, sometimes you have to slow your tempo down to get them the ball in a low post. And, and people say, well, your tempo changes. Well, yeah, we try to get the ball to our best players and our leading scorers. So when you have Onyeka Kongwu and Isaiah Mobley, Evan Mobley, even Chavez Goodman could score with his back to the basket. Nick Rikosik, we've had a lot of good big, big men. Chavez Metu is in the NBA. So, so we, you have you – know, our philosophy is offensively. We change it every year and tweak it based on our personnel. We have really fast guards. We have a lot of shooting. We have creativity in our backcourt. So we'll probably use that dynamic playmaking to our, our strengths, hopefully. Coach, we're going to bring in Boogie Ellis and Kobe Johnson now. And uh, we'll say thank you to you. We appreciate your time. Good luck this year. Thank you. Thanks, Andy.